Here we go. All right. Hello, everyone. Kyle A0Z here. Welcome to the channel. And uh, tonight, I've got uh, Joshua N5FY from Tufton Antennas. We're going to talk about Josh and his, uh, his antennas and a uh, little 3D printing and design work and uh, a whole bunch of stuff. So hopefully it'll be a, a good stream here. Hello, Josh. How are you? Joshua. Good evening, Kyle. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, not a problem. Um, so I learned about your antennas through Thomas, K4SWL. And um, I guess maybe we'll start off. You, we talked about it uh, a little bit here at the beginning before the stream. You shared a campsite with Thomas. And uh, I guess, is that where you met Thomas for the first time? Or w was there a relationship before that? Or how did that, how did that relationship progress there? Yeah, so uh, obviously there's some more backstory, but as soon as I had an antenna that I needed some field testing in, you know, I had been watching some YouTube videos here and there, and uh, obviously Thomas does an awful lot of photo soda uh, field work, and so I said, hey, that's a great guy to give me some feedback right. on an antenna, and you know, he uses all kinds, so I was like, yeah, let's send him one and see what he thinks. Yeah. So I just got to messaging him a bit here and there and then uh, ended up staying with him for the uh, Whiskey 4 Golf Soda Camp Out, which was a great time. So yeah, that was the first time I got to meet Thomas. Yeah. And he's featured your antenna multiple times, um, at least the QRP ones. I Sometimes I don't I don't get to watch Thomas's stream all the time because um, he puts out a lot of content and there's a lot of stuff go, going on with uh, ham radio and YouTube. So Sometimes I, I I catch them and sometimes I don't. But I know that he is very fond of your antennas, um, and I've heard nothing but glowing reviews from from uh, uh, people that have purchased your antennas. So that's at least that's a good thing, right? Um, oh yeah, oh, yeah. He, um, yeah. He's only got my QRP versions. I don't think he'd use 100 watts. So no, no. I, was, I, I, was I gonna... do have a picture of him running 300 watts. He finally oh, you... admitted that here a while back. But uh, was that at the the, the soda camp out? At the yeah, yeah. <laughs> we actually ended up going to a, a poda event, and uh, the uh, the guy with the amp running, he didn't want to turn that sucker off. So uh, I snapped a <laughs> photo. I figured it was my only chance. <laughs> yeah, well, one of the rare opportunities that Thomas uh, is going to uh, operate for more than hundred watts. Yep, he gets the job done with QRP. Yeah, right. Um, so I think if I read correctly, or Remind me, you recently changed your call sign. Um, I did. Yeah. yeah. So tell me a little bit about your ham radio story and when you became a ham and why you changed. And just uh, if you want to yeah. wrap a few minutes about your history here. Yeah. I uh, so I so I'm a mechanical engineer, and I always joke I should have been an electrical engineer because I just love working with electrical projects. And so obviously ham radio is a bit of a good fit, but I didn't get into ham radio until, uh, well, I didn't get my ticket until 2020. Um, my uh, father kind of got me interested in it. It's like, yeah, that sounds like fun. I'll go take a test and play around a little bit. And about is six he, months later. Is he a ham radio operator? Yeah. Yeah. So he's up okay. in uh, Indiana, which is uh, where I grew up. So he's uh, November 9, a uniform hotel. Um, but yeah, about six months later, I got my general and then that, uh, that was back in summer of 2020. And then I finally upgraded to, uh, to extra here this year. So the whole time I kind of said, well, I'm not going to change my call sign until I can get something shorter, you know, a forever call. Yeah. And, um, yeah, a lot of people will say, well, you know, if you live in four area, you should have a four call sign. Um, I've moved around way too many times to really care. And so, you know, maybe I'll stay in four area. I'd kind of like to, um, but who knows what'll happen. So I wasn't really concerned about that. And uh, I'm not getting a, a one by two, four here. So here we are, November five, Fox Yankee. Yeah. Yeah. So did you, um, did you put in just for, was that a, a, a call sign that you wanted and you put in for it or did you just get, do a splatter yeah. approach and just All right, yeah. the first one I get, I get. Yeah, as I was uh, as I was ready to take my test, I just started looking to see what was available and what was coming up. You know, there was a couple ways to do that. Yeah, and uh, I think I had a list of four that I was okay with, and two that were I was pretty happy with. And yeah. this was actually my number one pick. And uh, there was one other guy who had applied for it, 
Um, you know, of course there was like a whiskey zero, but there was, I don't know, there might've been 45 people who applied for that one. So oh, I was like, wow. yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to snatch that one. So I didn't wait for it, but, uh, yeah, you, you really never know. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, um, that lottery system, you know, it's amazing how like a ton of people apply for those one by twos or two by ones. And then magically at the end of the process, there's only like three people left. And you're like, why yeah. did you even apply for this? If you knew that you weren't even going to, yeah. you know, get it. I, I don't yeah, know. I mean, the rules are real clear cut. So it is right. interesting. people apply for it and you know, they're not going to get it. So yeah, make there sure was, you follow, follow those. There, there were a couple of technicians that applied for the call that I have. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. The but, next uh, call. Yeah. But you're not going to get with the tech. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, yeah, very good. Um, so let's jump right into it. So um, first, let's um, let me bring up the website here, and um, let's. Uh, I'm just going to go to the first. Here, now you're going to. Everyone's going to see how the sausage is made here. So now I got to go to share my screen, and uh, I got to pick. Uh, I got to pick this one here. And share, and then I got to bring this thing over so Joshua can see here, and all the people in the audience can see. So, um, tell me a little bit about why, where the company began. Why did you start um, mm -hmm. designing antennas? Like, were you solving a problem, and it grew from there? Like, what is the history behind what we're seeing here? Yeah. So as soon as I got my my general, I was in the market for an HF rig and antenna and all that. Um, I live in an HOA, so putting something up permanent wasn't really an option. Um, so I ended up with an MFJ, I think it's a, a 1984. I think it was a low power version, so the, the 30 watt. And I would deploy that. I'd throw it up over a tree, so I'd do an inverted V. And, uh, you know, I'd operate for the night to pull it back down. Right. Um, and yeah, obviously that didn't, that didn't last real long. If I left it up for, you know, a few weeks at a time, I'd start to wear through the, the radiating wire. And, yeah. um, so I was, I was kind of looking at what was available and I came across, uh, poly stealth, which is a 26 gauge and it's, it's real strong stuff, which is what all of my antennas, most all of my antennas are made out of. Yep. Um, so something that was, you know, much less visible. So I started thinking about, you know, what, what can I do that I can install permanently? Um, and there's some other antennas on the market that use the same, the same material. Um, but I wasn't really happy with some of the winders and, um, you know, even like the MFJs, you know, it's a decent little antenna, great to get started with. Um, but it's, you know, not, not the smallest compact package. It doesn't have a winder built in. Right. And so I said, yeah, what the heck, I might as well 3d print something. And, um, one of the things I really like about 3d printing is that, you know, it almost changes the prototyping industry a bit. Um, you spend 10 minutes on a design, you know, if you're a quick design, real simple item, and you just throw it on a 3D printer, you don't think anything about it. You know, you pull it off a couple hours later and you're like, oh, shoot, you forget several aspects of it. Right. And it's not a big deal because the, the cost of it is so low. So I just thought, well, I'll, I'll kind of mock something up and and uh, and see if I can come up with something that, you know, fits my needs that I'm happy with. And so I first did it in cardboard just to kind of get the angles correct and make sure the wire would pull off the winder. You know, I was happy uh, with it. And um, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So I came up with a, a several revolutions. And then um, that, that main one there that you see is really more or less the first uh, the first revolution of that. So a couple little tweaks here and there. Yeah, um, that's kind of what I landed on. So that really was my, my first antenna um, that I produced. And, you know, I wasn't really intending to sell them. Um, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have this idea of starting a, you know, a small out of the house antenna building business. Um, but I had a couple of people ask me for them and they're like, Oh, I'll, I'll give you some money for, you know, cover costs and whatnot. And then I got to thinking, it's like, you know what, if there's a demand for these things that can help pay for some new toys. Right. Right. So pay for, right. for the radio gear. And so that's kind of what got the ball rolling. And, you know, then I wanted something more compact. So I came out with my, uh, my QRP version. And then uh, there's the, the fat boy, as I call it. Um, that's just a, a T240. So that one right there, um, you know, can handle a bit more power, but it's still in a very small, compact package, a little bit heavier gauge wire. Right. Um, so really, I just I was looking for something else. I'd go make a design, come up with an, a new uh, a new antenna and make sure it fit my own needs. And then um, even, even from there, some of my antennas are essentially requests from other people. Um, really this T240, I don't, I don't run more than hundred watts. So I didn't really have a, a use for it, but somebody wanted a, a T240 small package antenna to take out in the field. And I don't know if they were running hundred watts digital or what they were doing with it, but, uh, 
why not? I can offer it. And that's one of the things I like about my shop is the ability to offer a huge variation and in, in different products. Um, in most of my products you can you can get whether it's just a winder, it's a winder and a toroid, or it's a full kit, or it's fully assembled. Yeah, you've got a lot of options here. And if you yeah. want to if you're a kit builder, you can just get the kit. Or if you can if you want it assembled or you just want some parts, you can just mm -hmm. pick and choose, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. I noticed here, so everyone has probably seen the the forty nine to one, right? With the the wrappings and the the two primary and the other secondary, and then you've got the um, um, the capacitor to, to help bring the the uh, the tune in. But then you've got is that a um, up there that you connect the antenna to? Is that uh, just a like a barrel connector up there? Yeah, yeah. So they they all are made with a two millimeter banana plug. And then there's also, you can see on the end, there's a, a loop there. Um, I don't really advertise this, but the, and, and I should, I mean, I could spend way more time on, on documentation. Um, but the idea there is you make a, a quickly deployable length of wire. So if you wanted to have multiple winders, um, you, you could have, you know, if you wanted to have a, a wire for 60 meters, uh, if you wanted to have a 40 meter plus an add-on for 20, um, but the idea there is you could then just make a relief loop on the end of it and use that S clip to then connect it to the antenna for your strain and relief and then plug it in. Or you've got those four holes and you can see it in that picture there um, where the, the radiating wire kind of weaves back and forth in between those holes and that pr produces the uh, the strain relief. Right. So right. I just, I want to have lots of options with, uh, with the various um, antennas. Yeah. 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 I like that design. I like the, the, the aspect of of having your your antenna coiled onto your antenna and it's one package is very yep. um i like that that design um i think you know before 3d printing and um was a thing you know you would get the antennas that i had long ago you would have the ballon or the unun -un, and then you mm -hmm. would have the wire as a separate thing like it was never together for some odd reason right. And and now with three D printing and you know rapid prototyping and design, you can, and uh, you know it's just the the way that we deploy antennas. It's uh, it's nice to have all of this stuff in in one package, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. That one right there is uh, I gotta give Thomas I gotta give Thomas credit for that antenna design there. He um I don't have one uh, I don't have one handy here, but we've we've got those quick BNC connections that have. Um, like the large, I don't know if they're four millimeter banana connectors on them. Yeah. And then you can also like screw in the end of a wire. Um, you know, a lot of people use those and they're great if you have a in a built in tuner or if yep. you want to use it with uh, an external tuner. But uh, the issue there and his request was, hey, I need something that doesn't stick out so far from the radio that I'm going to bump and, you know, damage my my transceiver. And so I was like, well, we can come up with something real small that's, uh, you know, very low profile. And that's really what uh, what birthed that design there. Yeah. Well, there it is. That's, that, the, yep, that's there it right is. there. Yep. <laughs> and we're going to get to that uh, that paddle board or that uh, that knee board, too. Yeah. Um, I know, <laughs> I'm probably opening a can of worms here that I probably shouldn't. But, uh, but oh, uh, yeah, right. I... I I have um, deployed actually in my mountain topper. I've got one of those BNC connector um, mm -hmm. doodads, and I saw this, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, that is a!" Well, I saw Thomas's yeah. video, and I'm like, yeah. "What a genius idea of just sticking it on the end of the the antenna tuner, right?" Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't yeah. need anything else, right? Yeah. yeah, it's great. It's great. And then, of course, uh, you've got uh, the Infos nine to one. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, is... so essentially I've got, um, I, I don't have a 9 to 1 greater than 100 watt, but I've got 100 watt and I've got the QRP of both an infed half wave and a 9 to 1, and then the larger T240 for a half wave, um, and then that no, no transformer. So essentially I try to cover all my bases for, for different sizes. Right, yeah. yeah. How long did it take you to kind of prototype this this uh, antenna winder design was it something that came to you easy or did you go through a lot of iterations yeah i uh that, that's always a great question um so i was fortunate enough to take a 3d modeling class in high school um 
Holy moly. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, so I was actually my uh my it was, so it was one of these elective courses and there was a lot of different things that we did through the through the semester. And so 3D modeling was just one of them. And I, I just had a knack for it. I'm very very mechanically minded anyway. Yeah. Um so I actually learned in Autodesk um I forget if it's called A, it was one, two, three. I forget what it was called, but it was uh, one of the earliest versions of their uh, 3D modeling software. And so now I use uh, Fusion 360, which you can get um, for a free personal license. Right. Um, and, and it's it's fabulous for, for stuff like this. Yeah. Um, so to answer your question, uh, not very much time, um, but I've got a little bit of a knack for it. So Yeah, yeah. That Fusion 360 license, I think you have to sign up for a hobbyist license. Mm -hmm. Right. And then yep. they make you, at least I, the last time you, they made you th jump through a bunch of hoops to kind of get it. Yeah. But once you got it and you sign in with your AutoCAD account and set up two factor authentication, then, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of, they, they kind of leave you alone after that. Yeah. Yeah. A few years ago it was a, a bit easier to find, but, um, you know, if, if anyone can't find the link to, to kind of get signed up for it, let me know. I'd be happy to shoot you a link for it. Um, but then, yeah, once you get signed up and you get it downloaded and installed, um, it'll only, only let you use it on, on one machine at a time, uh, uh, which I kind of ran into here recently. And then on top of that, they will make you re-sign up uh, every every 12 months. Um, but, I mean, for what you're getting, I'll, I'll jump through some hoops. So it's it's a great software. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 45 Auto says, when I was in high school, we didn't have three dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. Long time ago. Uh, Adam says Autodesk Inventor was the previous Inventor, version. yes, yes. Thank you, Adam. That's it. I'm just reading that. Autodesk Inventor. Yeah, my yep. um, you can see I'm wearing a Purdue shirt. I'm uh, a Purdue grad, but it was kind of funny. My my teacher at the time, um, so I lived in northern Indiana. She was driving down to uh, West Lafayette to take classes to learn Autodesk uh, Inventor, and coming back and teaching us and. Next thing you know, she's like, "Hey, we've got some some students over there that, that need some help. Can you go? Can you go help them?" Oh, sure, no problem. <laughs> I, but, uh, I I just enjoyed it. So, I wish that there was classes. I mean, I would totally love to take a class in Fusion three hundred and sixty. I mean, my class yeah. that I take in Fusion three hundred and sixty is Google and YouTube, right? Yes. But yeah. I would like to have an all encompassing. Like, I took a Photoshop class many many years ago at a community college. I still use some of the stuff that I learned in that community college class today, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. I wish that there was something like that in Fusion 360. I have yet to find something that is like, you know, college credit um, cost, uh, has similar cost to a college credit versus I found many Fusion 360 classes online that is like, Oh yeah, it's to three thousand dollars. I'm like, I'm not spending three thousand dollars on a Fusion three hundred and sixty yeah. class. I'm sorry, oh, I'm yeah. not. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, if anybody there's, there's in the really, chat, there's a lot of great YouTube content out there now. Yeah, I just thought it was funny because I was doing three D in high school, and again, I just was really fortunate to have been able to do that. Um, but then when I went to uh, when I was at Purdue, um, you know, I was back on the drawing board and working in two D. I'm like, <laughs> it feels like I'm going backwards here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you got a uh, a T1 case here. Yep. That's uh Yeah, I just uh actually I think I saw I, I saw somebody have just a real simple kind of block of plastic. It was 3D printed. And the the idea there is the the T1 is just an excellent, excellent tuner. If you have a chance to snag one, I recommend it to anyone yeah. working QRP that uh that needs a tuner. Um but the issue is, and honestly, I'm still on my first battery, so maybe it's a non-issue. I don't really know. But uh, the idea is, you you throw that in your bag, your pack, and your your the buttons on it are exposed, so you're you're constantly turning it on. Right. Um, and the concern there is, you know, wearing down your battery, but it also offers a bit of protection for it. Um, so you'll prevent hitting some buttons, and you also cover up the BNCs, and you know, less chance of getting some dirt inside them, that type of thing. So. Right. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I noticed that on some of your, and maybe all of them, if you, you can buy the STL file. So you, if you have a 3D yes. printer, you, yes. you have some options where you can, you can buy the STL file, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, so any of my designs, so those, um, those pop up when somebody asks me for them, is it, Hey, can uh, I send you a few bucks for the file? 
Okay, sure. And so I just upload them and, and, you know, it's, it's easy. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't mind sharing that stuff. Um, the one that I won't in case anyone wants to know is the, uh, the lap board. Um, I, I just, it's not exactly hundred percent my design, which I can talk about that, but, um, that's the one that I won't upload. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mentioned it earlier. I, I, I want to be able to offer, you know, different, um, different configurations for each of these. And that even includes if you have a 3d printer and you just want to be able to print one of these, go for it. Um, and if there's one that I don't have listed, again, it's really just when someone asks me, I'll uh, I'll upload it. So if you're looking for something or um, I, I shouldn't offer any pro bono work, but um, I do enjoy modeling. So the uh, the the work that goes into some of these designs, you know, is fairly light for for some people. So I really don't mind uh, offering them up for sale. Yeah. So the the antenna that I like that is really sexy is this QRP. Um, yeah. antenna. I really like the yeah. design on this guy. Yeah, I've got a couple here. Let's see if I the, can. Um, yeah, the idea there is, and so I, I've got to, i got to give a shout out to um, N6 ARA uh, Aura. So he's got this new, I don't know how well this will show up here. Um, yeah, I just bought that. Maybe we can. Yeah, oh, it's excellent. It's just excellent. I, um, I, let me, hey, let me, let me, uh, let me bring over. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, uh, I didn't have to, I didn't get a link ready or anything like that. Yeah, I just um, I just bought it and I got it like two days ago. Yeah, if anybody has a link for uh, N6 ARA, the, his mini SWR, I think it's technically still beta. But this thing is excellent. There it is. Perfect. Um, I highly recommend. So this thing works very well. Very simple, you know, fairly quick build. Um, so so explain but, explain to the, the audience here what uh, what what we're looking at here. Yeah, so if you have if you have a, a QRP rig that has built-in SWR meter, great. If you have a QRP rig that doesn't, this product is for you. Um, the the idea here is you'll simply put it in line with your coax, um, and it's you know simple. It's just to plug it right into the radio. Um, yep, there's a picture right there. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, but the idea is you can visually see when the lights light up how much uh, reflected power you've got. And so he's got one on there for one to one, two to one, three to one. So based on how many lights light up, you know, if you've got a good match and if you uh, are protecting your your radio. Yeah. So some of these rigs that just don't have SWR built in, um, it's a great little add-on product product for, uh, for a small kit. Right. I think that, uh, let's see. Take a look. Yeah, so there... There it is. Goes in line, and somewhere I was reading in here. He's, he's got, got excellent instructions too. Yeah, I need to. I need to see if I can outsource some of my instruction writings to him. <laughs> Where is it? Probably it's going to be on the last page. Of course, why wouldn't it be on the first page? And there you go. There it is. Yeah. So these are the lights that light up whenever um, you know you put RF through it. Yeah, so you won't you won't know how much power you've got coming out, um, but if you've got power coming out, you'll you'll see the forward light light up, and then yeah, there's a little chart there. But you know, the way I think about it, if you've got you know more than one red light, you might want to be concerned, right? Um, if you've got no red lights, you're you're in good shape, and of course you can you can test it as well on uh, on a rig. Yeah, um, most rigs will handle low SWR, you know, higher SWR for a very short amount of time. So I did put a little bit of a bad batch out of mine just to test the product and, and again it's great um now do those only... do those led mm -hmm. lights do they like is there a delay on them so it or is it you know no, whenever they're... you're running cw it's it's blinking with your CW. oh yeah there it is blinking with them yep, okay gotcha yeah no no noticeable delay gotcha yep yep and the only thing i changed about mine um and i think i posted this on my on my twitter but um so he's got a uh I'm sure it's one of these photos, but he's got a 3D printed um, little like back cover case. And honestly, I don't know how it fit because I put um, some adhesive uh, shrink tube on mine. Yeah, um, but that's that's because I do that with that's, I do that with everything. I wanted to make it as you know small as possible, and I I love the design of it and being able to see the back of it. So I put some shrink tube on mine. But uh, anyway, it's great great little kit. So. Tell me about the the design for your QRP. Um, yeah, that we're uh, showing off here. Yeah, so I don't, I don't. Well, 
you can you mean, go ahead and click on that photo right in the middle there. This yeah, one right here? Right there. Yep. So it, really what I was looking for is something as absolutely small as possible. And so you can see there, it's a very standard uh, 49 to 1 um, wrap. And then it, it's got the small capacitor in there mm -hmm. as well, you know, rated for the, the voltage you expect to see. And so really what I was looking for is something as absolutely as small as possible, which means cram everything together. You know, no circuit board, no little box, nothing like that. And then, um, you know, a lot of my products, you'll see this, is it's got uh, heat shrink um, over top of it. So in this case, I've got, you know, the little cordage that goes through it, and that offers some some strain relief. And then, yes, yeah, so that's a great picture there. Um, and then, yeah, it's just it's just covered up in some, uh, some adhesive-lined heat shrink just to kind of give it a little bit of protection, help pull things together. And I mean, I haven't haven't had any failures with them, so it seems so you, to be working well. But yeah, and you're using the 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 toroid, the two um, are those T one sixties. Uh they are T sixty three forty threes. Forty threes, gotcha. Sixty three forty threes. Um, sixty four forty three, something like that. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you're using the the toroids as strain relief with the your. Uh, your cables here are your um... yeah the cables they they interweave each other um but it is such a small package that ah. they do a little bit yes um I, I when i was kind of thinking about the design that was my intent was to make them kind of wrap around each other gotcha um but really when you think about it you're using such light materials um in that uh poly stealth uh 26 gauge is just super super light stuff so even if you did have some strain on the toroids, it would be so little. It's it's not going to hurt anything. You're right. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, I I like that. Uh, I like that uh, that design. I mean, between you and Adam, I don't know. Um, I think Adam's is a little bit smaller than than yeah. yours, yeah, but it's um, a little smaller. Yep. <laughs> it's the the invisible or the the shrinking toroids of yeah. uh, <laughs> of getting them so small that. Uh, so that to the point where they don't even they, they just disappear and th this antenna it, literally it just dis it just disappears right i mean it's just so oh, yeah. small that it's oh, yeah. it's just um sometimes it's hard to see even whenever you've got it deployed especially with that poly stealth right yep yeah and so most of my uh, most of my field kits have a 49 to 1 in them and what you see there in the photo is as much cord as you would expect for like a full 40 meter half wave and so most of my kits I actually have, um, so I, I sell a linked kit as well, but I don't sell any of the antennas pre-cut that way. Um, but the idea is you essentially I've got a 20 meter on one side of it wrapped around and then an add-on where you just stick a, um, you know, a little S clip in between and you connect the banana connectors. And so you can add on the extra length for, right. uh, for a 40, 40 meter half wave. You can go longer if you wanted to, I would recommend uh, another winder, but yeah. Right. Right, right, right. Yep. I don't. I don't usually work to below forty meters in the field, though. So, right. It's an awful lot I, of wire. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really wish that, um, you know, the the mountain topper, the four B, has got eighty on it. I'm not really sure. I mean, I probably understand why they put eighty on it, but man, d could if yeah. that thing had forty, thirty, twenty, and ten, that would be just a stellar radio. And mm -hmm. I'm waiting for Hans to come out. I didn't buy the first version of the QMX at oh, Hamvention. I, I, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't pass it up. I ordered it as soon as it was online. <laughs> yeah. So I am waiting for. Well, one, I kind of got a little. I, I I bought a QDX and it had power issues, and um, I got one of the first ones, the QMX or QDX. No, not QDX. Q. CX the, QCI, the C yeah. dot yeah yeah yep. and there was some power issues and you had to uh, do some resolder and jumper some stuff and uh, at the time I wasn't using it that often so I sold it to a friend um, first I tried to do the the upgrade and I kind of botched the 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 board and I sold it to a friend who has a lot better solder skills than I <laughs> some repair I, skills <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so. Um, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to buy a first gen of anything, you know, in the ham radio world, just not yet. Um, so 
whenever that came out and I saw that, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait for, I'm going to wait for the, the, the second gen and third gen, but I'd really like to see, you know, something in the higher bands from, from Hans. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I actually, um, I don't, I haven't really botched any kits yet. I should say yet. <laughs> Knock on wood, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah. My uh my first kit though was uh, that Elecraft T1 that was in that photo. Um it, it's funny because it was uh this was a couple of years ago now, but um it wasn't as delayed as it is now when you order one. Yeah. Um, but it was still several weeks. And uh, when it showed up, I opened up the box and I'm like, wait a minute, these are these are parts. I, I had forgotten that I ordered it as a kit and I kind of panicked just a little bit, like, oh no, they sent the wrong one. But yeah, sure enough, I had ordered a kit. So that was really my first my first major uh, kit build, if you will. Not that it's a big one, but it, you definitely got some time sunk into building that thing. Right. Oh my gosh. Look at the price on this thing. Yeah. yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. I bought mine for 160 bucks. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what I paid for mine, but honestly, it, if I had to have another one, I would I would do an heartbeat. It's yeah. a great little tuner. Yeah. I don't think you can buy it as a kit anymore. Can you not? Nope, I don't think so. I, huh. Whenever I bought mine, I wanted it as a kit too and couldn't get it. But I was I bought... shocked how much of an upgrade it was for the... It was like maybe 30 bucks more. Yeah. Which, you know, if you're not a kit builder, it would totally be worth it. Wow. $200. Yeah, I not selling it that way anymore. Right. That is shocking on how much this... Uh... That has gone up. Wow. Well, it's still a good buy, like Joshua said. Yeah. I mean, it is still this thing. It will literally tune your gutters on QRP. It, it will. It will. I've uh, I've done that with mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I would I would say if you're if you're not wanting to spring for the Elcraft T1, um, which, which again I, I do recommend. Um, but the uh, the ATU 10, and I think I bought mine from uh, newdiytech.com. Um, that is, that's a, it's a pretty decent um, tuner and it's uh, much, much cheaper. And it does have watching um, relays in it as well, I, I believe. But it's also gotcha. USB C chargeable and it, it does seem to last quite a while. And yeah, I know a lot of people have, have bought it off of Amazon. Um, yeah. I've done some testing with that, and it it works it works fairly well. Very good. It's, it's uh, actually got a pretty big range as well, so I think you can run you can run without a nine to one in it. Just run a wire if you want. Gotcha. Kind of poise, but, yeah. yeah, wide uh, wide range here. Yep. There's uh, Thomas's review on it. If you want to, he got it from Bang Good, and uh, yeah, oh no, Barry uh, Ku three X. Yep. Yeah, Barry. Yeah, did a did a review on it. Yep. I actually did some uh, some testing of it and. Thomas posted it up there, so there's there's some notes up uh, on his site for that. Gotcha. For the grace, for the price, I think it's a great buy. Very okay. cool. All right, so back to um, yeah. It looks like um, looks like you're right. At, you got a blog here that uh, you do some just uh, <laughs> some findings. If if you fit, I had but, aspirations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I had aspirations. Yep. I I had a blog too, and uh, those aspirations quit really quick. Whenever uh, I I didn't yeah. have aspirations then. <laughs> well, so yeah, part of it is I guess this probably isn't real obvious, but this is actually a it's an Etsy shop, is what it is. Um, you, you pay Etsy, you know, half of your sales price. They they charge quite a bit. They make things easy, so I'm still using it for now. But um, they actually offer kind of a blog site as well. But I, I don't recommend it because you, you can't edit them once you uh, you put them out there. Ah, uh, gotcha. So it, it, one of my goals for the summer is to kind of get a new, um, probably like a Shopify with a, a blog site behind it and that type of thing. So yeah, my my site will change a little bit, but the websites won't uh, that won't change. So uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll uh, I'll have that up and running in the summer. But shouldn't mean too much for uh, for finding my products. Yeah. You've got an RF choke here, some three sixteen. Yep. That's uh, yep, everyone, needs was, a, everyone needs a everyone needs a choke here. Yeah, people always ask me, it's like, hey, what what uh, you you recommend I get a choke? And my my answer is always the same. It's like I don't recommend it until you need it. Need it, yeah. Had it, so uh, I I keep I keep one in, in all my kits as well. Yep. Um, yeah, I get I get that question quite often. So it uh, it may just save your bacon. Yeah, yeah, I um. 
I keep a choke also in in my kit to uh, just uh, just for that reason. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. We've kind of gone over all of the the links you had. You want to talk about um, the knee board? I don't know if uh, if I have a picture of the knee board. We'd almost have yeah, to. Yeah, like, uh, I'm rummage. sold out with the knee board, and there's way too much of a backstory there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw it in one of Thomas's videos, and um, it, it kind of looked like it was 3D printed, and sure enough, it was. Yeah, I'm sure one of the top videos there is should be right. able to find it. Um, and, you know, I didn't think too much of it. I kind of put it, I've got, honestly, I've got a pretty big list of products that I would like to develop. Um, really just a matter of time. And I've got some other people who've asked me for some different things. There's one random wire photo. What, where's Zebo uh, top left. Gazebo top left. Here? Oh, the gazebo. Okay. Yeah, it's in the gazebo, but uh, you can see it there on the static picture. Yeah, it might disappear. <laughs> Thomas, but anyways, don't... um don't uh yeah so i've here we go there you go there it is so the 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 product um was uh made by uh uh uh, carol ann n zero r n m and uh she's a ham um she got some some things going on and i haven't haven't been able to reach out to her and kind of connect as much as i wanted um but we got to talk in here you know several months i guess last last year sometime and uh, the Thomas kind of put us together and said, "Hey, um, you know, maybe Joshua can start producing these for you." And so I worked with her a little bit, you know, made some some design tweaks, and uh, you can see there's lots of holes in it, kind of for adaptability, and yeah, you know, there's several slits in there along the sides for you know moving where you have the strap that goes around your leg. And um, again, I just wanted it to be adaptable for you know many different use cases, and you know, however someone wants to deploy it in the field. Um, so I just kind of took her design. And, um, you know, I kept her name on it and it's got my, uh, my 1210, uh, company name on it as well. Um, and so I, I produced, I produced quite a few of those. I had, a, I had a printer dedicated running day and night for, for a couple of months. Wow. Um, and I, I couldn't keep up. Um, and then I had, uh, I had a breakdown with that printer and you know, I've had some other issues along the way. And so I'm, uh, currently sold out, um, I've got a stack here and, and should have some more uh, some more stock released real soon. Um, but yeah, the idea is just to have something real small, portable. It's it's very lightweight. I don't have a, an ounce number for you. Um, but yeah, you can see there. So Thomas has it strapped to his leg and he's got his KX2 sitting very comfortable on it with uh, the no transformer antenna there on the side. Yeah. And it's got a little grip plate um, to kind of keep things from sliding around. And then it comes with um, some bungee cord. So you can kind of cut to size. And the idea is just to put it through those holes, tie a knot on the other side. And you can adapt it to make, you know, whatever transceiver you want in the field, make it a bit more secure. Um, I don't think Thomas does that because, you know, he can't take the same radio out in the field two times in a row. Right. Um, So I think he just kind of does it without, um, but he's had good luck with it. So um, it's it's a great little product and uh, kudos to to Caroline for uh, a nice design there. So do you print this in two? See, so it folds. I see some some yeah. hinges there. It folds yeah. into into a single piece. Yeah, when I was looking at the design, um, you know, three D printing it it really so it's good for a lot of things, and it's great for ham radio. Um, and, and it's it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's it's a hobby in and of itself. Um. But really, if you're going to mass produce something of this nature, it's not it's not really the best uh, the best tool for the job. Um, so when I started designing it, it's like you know what if this if this product takes off, you know it's a, probably a good candidate for injection molding or something like that. Yeah. And the issue with that is you're going to spend a couple thousand dollars in tooling costs um, just to just to make one part. Right. And so the idea was, well, I'm going to design this. I'm going to make the large piece uh, identical. So what you'll see if you get your hands on one of these is that those two large pieces are the exact same piece. Um, just one is flipped over, essentially. Oh, okay, and, gotcha. And then it's got uh, those five hinge pieces in the middle. And then, again, this is this is Carol Lance design. Um, she's got uh, brass rods. So brass rods, one on each side that goes through the middle. And that's kind of what holds it all together. So holds up in a nice little package. And, yeah, work, it seems to work real well. Yeah. 
Yeah, I saw that. It was just like, oh, what a what a neat little thing to you know. Whenever you go out on a soda or or even a poda, you might not even yeah. have a place to set, right? Mm -hmm. And I always end up putting my my rig on the on the ground, right? And uh, yeah. it'd be nice to get that thing up off the ground so you can actually see it and see what's going on with the because whatever I'm running, you know, if you if you're setting in the seat, I've got a video that I explained this. I just activated the arch and I was sitting in a seat like here and my radio was down on the other side of me. I couldn't see the S meter. So, you know, I was just giving signal reports by what I yeah, thought it by, was, you by know, sound. by sound, yep. right? Yep. You know, so, and half that battle is, you know, actually listening to your signal report and saying, oh, that's a strong, I'm going to give, that's a strong signal, I'm going to give a 5.9, but also glancing down at your, your S meter and, you know, giving a proper signal report based on what your radio mm -hmm. says, you know? Yep. Yeah, I, I get the whole, everyone's got a 5.9. Um, but yeah, I, I, I appreciate a good signal report. So I like to give a good signal report. Yeah. And yeah, it is just one of the many things that makes, uh, makes much easier. Yeah. Having that rig, uh, nice and handy. Um, yeah. And, uh, I, I see Jim's got a comment there. He's got one of my knee boards as well. Um, so shout out to Jim. He does a lot of, uh, photo, uh, photo bicycle activations. Yep. I, I love seeing his content. It makes, yep. uh, makes my day. I do too. I yeah. do too. Um, let's see what else, what else I think we were going to talk about. So you, your, your antennas here that, um, that you design, let's go back to one of your, um, you design in, in fusion 360. Where did, where did you learn how to, how to manipulate fusion 360? Was it trial and error or you took a class or, or you said, you know, you back in high school, you're doing 3D yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. So fusion 360 essentially replaced, um, Autodesk inventor, which is, which is what I learned back in high school. Yep. Actually, it's kind of funny because I, I learned how to 3D model before I learned how to draft. And uh, so that, that honestly was a, a, a bit of a challenge. Like, okay, I, I can't think 3D anymore. I got to think, you know, two dimensional and 2D. I got to draw it more than more than one time because uh, essentially in 3D, you you model a part, you know, fit in this physical space. And there's a lot of tools for being able to quickly move things around it and manipulate the object. Um, but then once you have it created, then you actually will export or you'll you'll move that part into a drawing file and then you'll dimension it from there. Whereas, you know, it used to be we would just dimension on uh, on paper and everything was two dimensional. We'd have to draw different aspect views. And um, so, yeah, Autodesk uh, uh, Fusion 360 is, uh, is, is, is great for that. Yeah. So. Sometimes half the battle from my pr perspective from not having a design background is... Mm -hmm. What do I what do I search on? I know what it needs to look like, or are is the, actually there's two issues. One, I know what it needs to look at look like, but I don't know what like you know a chamfer, right? You got to learn what a chamfer is versus you know, uh, and I'm trying to pick up words here, but I don't know what to search on, right? And I don't know what wh I know what it needs to look like, and yeah. um, so that's that is. Um, frustrating whenever you know i needed to curve like this what is that curve called right yeah and then also things like um if you're going to build something that needs some some strength to it do you just make it 100 percent infill or how like w what are the things that i need to do to make this a little bit more stronger a case in point i my first design that i used uh, fusion 360 on was if you um you go to um i actually forgot to what username i put it under thingiverse but anyway it's an 891 and a kenwood uh, tm um, v7a holder that has a ram mount ball on the end of it well the first couple of them after a couple of of you know by car jiggling around that ram mount ball just broke off right, right? Yeah. so I, I, I gave up and I was just like, all right, you're just gonna have to put a screw through it. <laughs> you know, I just I just put a rod through it and put some metal uh, hardware in yeah, there. just put, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna make yeah. a hole all the way through. You're just gonna have to put a screw in it and make it make yeah. it uh, but you know, that engineering mindset of, you know, drawing it into once I figured out how to all right, I, you need to draw it in two D and then extrude it from there. 
and then then that was easier to grasp but then you know you've got the whole join thing and just manipulating objects in in fusion 360 for me it is not that intuitive and someone says oh just you know use tinkercad that is too simple i I can't use tinkercad Mm -hmm. i need i I like the concept of fusion 360 but there is that learning curve that i think some people you know need to get over and i just like i said if anybody knows of a class or anything that I can take online or, you know, have some instruction. I'm sure there's probably millions of books that I could probably sit and read, but my attention span on reading a book is about that much. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I will buy so, that. I'll buy that $50 book and it'll sit on that coffee table. Oh yeah. So for probably, I don't know, maybe five years now, I've been fixing toys, 3d printing. I've got a little car here that had a terrible, terribly designed wheel on it. And uh, my neighbor was going to throw it away. I was like, Hey, let me 3d print something for that. I'll fix it for your kid. Um, But I've been 3d printing for, um, I don't know, five or six years now. And my, my kids are always like, Ooh, can you, can you make this? Or Hey, I want to make this. (laughs) Well, at the moment, my daughter wants to make something and she's nine and she, she wants to design it. Uh, so I'm like, well, okay, grab a piece of paper, right? You know, draw, draw what you want to design, and I'll and I'll help you do it. Um, I mean, yeah, there's 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 a learning curve, and yeah. you know, if you're sitting with someone who has done it before and who and who uh, who can kind of help you with it, that's one thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, just just like anything, it, it does take time. Um, well, it, yeah, and even if like you had somebody, you know, transferring knowledge to you, it, unless you see it being done and then you go and practice it you're not going to get mm. good at it right um yeah. uh, this the same thing hang on same thing goes with contesting like you know you can you can look you can watch youtube videos about people contesting until you're blue in the face but until yeah, you actually until go you do it. until you yeah. do it and you and you run a pile up or you're running so2r on you know on ready contests you, you're not going to get good at it and yep. it takes repetitive um yep actions to 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 get good at something and that's that's half my problem too is i will think of a product or some, think of something that i want to design and i will sit down in front of three fusion 360 and be like okay where do i start and then i'll be and then i'll have to relearn i just said yeah. with node red i will literally like i'm not a programmer i will figure out how to do something on google and then three months later go i did that somewhere else but i don't remember what i did so then i'll yeah. re-google it right Yep. yep. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, you think about, so the, the first time I set up WS JTX, it, oh my gosh, it was, it was terrible. It took me forever. Yeah. Like we're talking hours and it was, you know, part of it was the radio I was interfacing with and some goofy things. Uh, but just, I didn't, I didn't know what to check, what to try. Um, and now you give me a brand new radio or a radio that doesn't interface directly and I know all the things to quickly check to help set it up. I, I mean, it's just, yeah. it you don't get that, you know, from, from day one. It just takes right. a little practice, a little bit of time. Right, 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 right. What type of 3D printer do you run? So I've got, uh, I've got Creality's. Um, so when I first got into 3D printing, they were selling a uh, Ender 3 Pro Yep. for 200 bucks at micro center yeah and i said hey for 200 bucks i'm gonna go buy that uh, yeah previous to that i had an ender a8 which it was good for what it was but it had some some things that were not so great and so i said oh brand new you know very very popular machine out of the box um so i actually still run uh four three pros um, now currently only two are running and sometimes none are sometimes all of them are running <laughs> um i've got two that are in enclosures um so all of my all of my let's just call it all my red prints all my winders mm-hmm. are uh printed in asa which is much higher temperature um like i run my bed temp at 100 c uh, my print temp is somewhere over 155 um and the reason i do that is asa can handle the heat much better and is therefore you know much much more durable um so this uh this antenna here um so i i market it as being a portable only you know temporary don't install this and expect it to last a long time Uh uh-huh um you can see the rust on this guy and i didn't even bother covering the um the capacitor on it just because i wanted to see what it would do in the field 
Um, and this is some Atwood rope manufacturer cordage, which is good for UV. It's got UV protected. Um, I don't know if it's nylon or what it is. Um, this this antenna, I just pulled it down before before the stream here. Um, this thing has been installed for almost two years in my uh, at the at the peak of my house in the sun um, for two years, and I, I live in Georgia. So well, yeah, uh, this ASA material works really well. Um, wow, and so. One of the things that's fun about that is it's, it's a quite a bit more difficult to print, um, but I actually still print it on Ender 3 Pros. And then I've got uh, a newer Ender 7, which is what I print the um, the lap boards on just because it has a bigger bigger base. And then I've got a, f a few other ones that uh, I tinker around with, but those are my workhorses. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they take some maintenance and they can be frustrating at times. Right, um, right. But yeah, they're, uh, they're good machines. What, what people don't understand is 3D printing is a hobby in its own right yes, and absolutely so you you combine ham radio and 3d printing and if you're frustrated with ham radio <laughs> don't get into 3d printing <laughs> yeah. it'll, it'll make you even crazier but yeah. it's a it's a it's fun it's like i got my i got a 3d printer and it's it's worked great i've had my frustrations with it on bed leveling and um you know print spaghetti and all that oh, other yeah. stuff but it has brought me like so much joy on, you know, I, I l l like you, Josh, well, I, I decide, all right, I broke, I broke something and now I got to mm -hmm. fix it and mm -hmm. oh, I'll just 3d print it. And, uh, I, it's, I'm getting into satellites and behind here on the green screen, I've got, um, uh, I just bought a new bag and to put all the stuff in and I've got these rails on the V7A and I, I was literally sitting there putting all the things in the bag and making sure the battery fit and all, you know, they can get to the front face of it. And the, the radio wouldn't set up in the bag correctly, the way that I wanted it to set up. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, you know what? I'll, I'll 3d print a base for it. And I'll set the, I'll set the radio down in the base. So it's got ventilation oh, yeah. and whatnot. And that is something that I wouldn't have not been able to do oh, yeah. three or four years ago without, a, you know, without it, owning a 3d printer, makes you think of all these things that you can now solve easily because you have the resources to prototype and to print something quickly, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's great. great. I, um, I mean, honestly, I, I print something quickly design and print something. Oh, I mean, at least weekly. Um, today it was, uh, I wanted to put a pen insert in one of my pens that wasn't designed for it. And it's like, yeah, it's too short. I mean, yeah. A little insert. So three prints later and that kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier. You know, it's, it's kind of changed the way that we prototype a bit because you, you throw something on a printer and it's, I mean, it's essentially it's disposable. Yeah. It was a 45 minute print and I printed three of them because I didn't take my time. I mean, sure. I could have spent a little bit more time up front, but it's like, yeah, go throw it on the printer, go do something else for a little bit. Oh right. yeah. I didn't think about this little dimension or needing a chamfer here and, you know, make a quick tweak, throw it on the printer a second time. And um, yeah, it's just, it's it's enjoyable. It's a hobby in and of itself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's really kind of changed the way we uh, we think about and build things because it's just so simple. Yeah, yeah. I think your dad made made it his uh, an appearance in the chat here. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah. He's talking probably uh, some rapid prototyping here. And then Dean says, "I learned to three D print before I took up amateur radio." I don't know where Josh lives, but two in the same state would let help when needed. Oh yeah, very good. Yeah, I don't know, Dad. He uh, actually, <laughs> I I don't know if it's still in my shop. He um, he needed a bracket for something, and I mean he's he's asking me for stuff here and there often, but um, he needed a bracket for something, so he just kind of put it on a I think it was a napkin or something and took a picture of it and sent it to me. <laughs> and they're like, hey, can you can you tweak this? I was like, well, hey, you're messing with dimension here and can you pull an extra dimension here so we kind of check things and make sure they're gonna line up correctly. Yeah. And I sent him the file and he printed it on his 3D printer, which that maybe was a phone call or two to help him out there. And uh he I mean he loves doing that stuff too. Um probably just didn't have the time for it. But yeah, he printed it out and oh hey this doesn't fit quite right. It's okay, let me make a couple tweaks for you and I mean, even, you know, several states away, 12 hours away, you know, I'm designing stuff and he's printing it and we kind of get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. All right, Joshua, 
anything else we're getting here to the to the end of the stream here anything else you want to promote or um uh give shout outs or the floor is yours oh not really this is uh i'm i'm not uh i'm not a big i don't know advertiser um, <laughs> you know we we were being we on were... a youtube live is a bit uncomfortable for me um but this, is, this has been great so yeah this is a lot of fun yeah did, yeah thanks um, thanks for being a, on yeah i did a um a training session i guess uh presentation for uh, for dad's club up in indiana yeah um so shout out to those guys up there um they actually bought uh a whole bunch of kits from me and did a a, a build um for one of their club activities which oh, is cool. uh, which is really cool yeah um I, I don't think I can offer the same pricing for everybody, <laughs> but uh, that was that was pretty cool because they were able to. I think they ended up doing almost twenty kits, and oh, wow. um, they ended up doing a, a second working session. But they walked away with a, a bunch of working antennas, and so that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything. I mean, I, I'm going to re continue to re release more products. Um, I'm working a lot right now with uh, batteries and power. Um, I've got, uh, this is actually, uh, this one, this one's actually headed to Thomas, but, um, this is a, it's got a voltage display on it, which I don't know if I even sent him a picture of this. Um, but the idea is to use a, uh, just a cell phone charger. So yeah. cell phone charger, USB-C, and then this thing has a, uh, USB-C on the other side. Okay. And so this is set up to charge a, uh, a 3S, um, lipo battery which i i run all lipos um obviously that's a whole nother discussion yeah um, i have i have two lifepo four batteries um but i mean this is a this is a five amp hour battery and it's just i mean there's a there's a cell phone charger right right so you it's just so small right yeah. right so you can just take your your everyone's got extra cell phone chargers oh yeah and yeah. you can charge your your small qrp yep. batteries yeah, and so this, yeah, yeah, and so it'll it'll do uh, power delivery. Um, so it'll do. I think it'll even go up to twenty volts, and then it'll step it down. So it'll buck or boost, uh, yeah. depending on what it needs to uh, to set up your voltage output. And then I put a little voltage display on it, so you can actually check your batteries in the field as well. Yeah, and see uh, see which power is. Oh, that's awesome. Um, are you gonna I, I, are you gonna sell those? I I might. I mean, if there's interest, I will. I um, think there would be a ton of interest. There probably would be, but then you get the question like, "Oh, well, I need a I need a life four charger," and you know, I, I can only do so many things. Um, but that one, I think, is <laughs> is super useful. Um, yeah, I travel a good bit, and so being able to charge a battery like that, in you know, I have my cell phone charger, so now I can charge a three right. S uh, lipo battery. So that was really the main driver for that. Um, well, it's you know, cons even, it's consolidating too. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I'm gonna. Yeah. Every time I go on a rove, right, I always bring, um, even out of state, like I've, I've done a couple of vacations where I've gone and done POTA, and you always have, I, I have four chargers, right? I've got yeah, a cell exactly. phone charger. I've got my LIFO charger. I've got this charger. I got. It's yep. a pain in the butt, yep. Yep. you know? And it's it's yeah, not my, like uh, I'm charging all the time, but sometimes yeah. you, you just, you know, want to make sure that you've got enough juice. Yeah, exactly. So I run... Everyone always wants to ask, you know, what's your favorite radio? Um, I have one. Yeah. Um, some people don't like to answer that question. I absolutely have a favorite radio. Um, so it, you 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 know it's my favorite because I have two of them. Um, I snagged a, a backup because if I ever had to send it in to be repaired, oh, I I, uh, I would be a, a pretty unhappy ham. I I think um, I know what it is. Yeah, you you probably you probably do the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the radio though is so power efficient. Um, I can run a so it's it's the uh, the TX five hundred. Yeah, um, I can run that radio and off of the the five amp hour battery for at least four hours. Um, wow. So I've done a couple of tests, and one was running the the TX five hundred and a uh, Raspberry Pi four uh, to do digital work, and I ran solid digital work for two hours, and I had pulled just over two amp hours out of that battery. Um, wow. So at the same time, it's like when I travel, I don't usually have a ton of time to play radio. So I, you know, get on an airplane, travel. Right. Um, so I don't, I probably won't ever have to charge it. Uh, but just having the ability to, to do so in such a small package is, is great. So, you know, I've got some power things coming. Um, 
So what, what did you, yeah. so I, I got a question about your Raspberry Pi and, and your yeah. TX500. So what did yeah. you use for a screen? Uh, so you got a, to, like to a TFT? Their, yeah, to each their own, but I've got a, um, I use a, uh, uh, iPad mini. So, um, oh, if and, you, uh, and then you, yeah, you, you, did you just, um, you, uh, like VNC, VNC into yeah. the, and you yeah. set it up as a hotspot and yeah. yeah okay. Gotcha. Yeah, so uh, shout out to uh, Dave Slaughter. I forget his call sign, but he runs um, he runs a distribution called HamPi. Um, it, it's a great product. I actually met him when he was first releasing it. I think he was maybe still on beta. Um, I haven't tried it in a while. I know it works, and a lot of people use it. Um, I'm using uh, KM4ACK uh, build a buy, yeah. and it, yeah. it works great. Um, honestly, it works so well that I just I just made a backup of it, and I don't want to touch it because it works well. Right. Um, but it's yeah, if it doesn't connect to Wi Fi, it offers a hotspot and then I just connect to my connect right. to it with my my iPad and, and then I've got full access. Excuse me. Um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And then I uh I've got an IC seven oh five as well, um, which is a great radio as well. It's just way more bulky, so I don't normally travel with it. Right. Um and running SDR control on an iPad mini or a regular iPad um is it's amazing. If you want to run digital you know, FT8, FT4 in the field. Uh, it's it's super cool and it works really well. So yeah. that's, uh, that's a great product as well that works uh, on, on Apple only. So yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that was uh, one of the reasons I was, I was looking for a tablet and that was one of the reasons I went that direction because I had the Sona 5. I was like, well, that's pretty cool software. I got to try that out. So right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have seen that software. I'm not an Apple person, but I have seen that software and it is really cool. Yeah, but yep. I mean every everything I I make is super small, so that's the that's actually a backup Raspberry Pi four, um, but it's got temperature controlled heat sink and fan in it. Um, yeah, so I mean you you can tell it's super small, right? Form factor, and um, I've got a little uh, buck converter in there, so it just plugs in my twelve volt and good to go. So. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Now, does that that power does it go to the power port or does it go into the to the pins to the uh, GPU? I, I dump it on the pins yeah yeah yep. so then i don't have anything coming out the side of it so usb-c right. micro or uh yeah micro hdmi yep. so i have my my gps dongle and then the uh, usb cord for the digi rig which works great um, yeah so everything comes out the end and again just super small package yeah yeah very cool <laughs> you got a whole whole bunch of cool stuff going on over there that's very i neat. uh i love to tinker so i well so you and i talked about this earlier um you know one of the questions is well how do you say your your company name um right i for the longest time i just called it tooth town because that's easy and when you say it people hear it and can say it back um so it is german and i don't i don't speak german um and i honestly i can't even remember how i came across the word but uh it's it's Tuften, i think is maybe the best way to pronounce it uh, but it means to it means to tinker, to create, to, to fiddle about, um, which is which is what I love to do. So yeah, ham radio is a, is a good fit for me, and so that's where that name came from. Right. Yeah. There's a there's a million and one things that you can fiddle around with in ham radio. Oh man. Oh man. Honestly, <laughs> so it it took me. It was six months before I got my general. Which as soon as I got my technician, I knew I wanted to get my general. Yeah. But even as a tech, there's so much you could do. You know, I had a, a, a eye gate set up in my. In my, uh, you know, up on yep. the second floor of my house. Yep. So there's just so much you can do, even as a as a technician. So I, I kind of played around with that and was distracted enough. I didn't worry about studying for the general. And then it's like, oh, okay, I'm I'm itching enough and studied for that a little bit. And uh, but yeah, there's the ham radio is such a such a vast uh, vast hobby and, and tool set. There's so much you can do with it. Yeah, technicians think, oh, I, d I can only get on VHF and UHF. But there's so many other things that you can do. Even yeah. with that that technician license, that mm -hmm. um, yeah, that uh, oh yeah, and and sticking well, once you yeah, you know, I've got a bunch of friends that are technicians, and I'm like, you need to get to general, and they're like, uh, you know, I'm like, once you get into the world of HF, the world oh, will yeah. open up for you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Honestly, the so <laughs> the uh, the reason I went from extra was, you know, as I started learning CW, there's there's a lot of um, a lot of DX you can work. Um, and even even at that, um, you know, I started hearing things overseas that were, you know, below general frequency. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I, I can't work that. 
And between you and me, you know, I maybe worked one in Russia real late one night that was maybe out of my privilege um but yeah it's like you know if if i want if i if i hear them i want to be able to work on so it's like yeah i'll get my uh get my extra so yeah yeah extra i mean if you want to work hf you know general is the way to go if you want to contest um and you want to be a serious contester you need your extra because there's a lot of things that go on in the extra band that other mm, yeah. itu regions only have privileges in, or they have privileges in, but you know, that's where the DX sometimes is. So, um, right. it's, um, but getting your extra and, and having that, uh, that knowledge set and, uh, just having, you know, then you don't have to worry about it. You're just, you know, I'm going to operate on the bands and I need to go yep. from 14 all the way up to or to, all the way to 14, five, you know, or 14, three. So 14, three, 14, five, 14, five. So, um, Yeah. I, actually, I, I should look. I, I got my my uh, quirky QRP thing here. Fourteen three five. Yeah, fourteen three five. Oh, I've been wanting to get one of those. You yeah, have it handy. I do. I have it right here. It's uh, it's my mat here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I've been wanting to snatch snatch one of those and haven't yet. So anyway, all right, Joshua. We've said it all. You've said it all. <laughs> It's uh, it was a privilege on having you on here. I I love all of your antennas. I'm gonna go out and buy one now. That uh, um, you I've know, been... I almost I almost looked at my order history to see if I'd sold you one. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I I'll tell you right now. I've been to your website at least probably twenty times, and I I just I don't know. I need to buy a couple of them, but um, I just I like going on there, and and I liked you had so many options that I was just like, all right, what I option have, do yeah, I want? I have, you know, I have a lot of options. Yep. You got a lot of SKUs, and yep, I, uh, I was like, I all right, and at 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 different parts of my you know life, I I you know at one point I'm like, I'll just get the kit, and then I'm like, I don't have time to put to get a kit together because I got a ton of other stuff I need to. I need to put together. I'm just going to buy an assembled one, you know? Yeah. So I, I put it in my cart and, and then I, I set on it for a little bit because I don't know which one to get. Right. And, I, but I should get a couple of them and I really should get a kit because I, it, it'd be good for me to, to put a, an antenna kit together. But um, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're fun little builds. Yeah. And I, I mentioned it earlier. Um, so Ara does a really nice job with his instructions, as I learned building his um, tiny SWR meter. Yeah. Um, I need to I need to see if he can uh, help me out. My instructions are not the best, um, and it, it's it is for a lack of trying because I uh, I don't really care for that type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I uh, I could definitely make them a little bit better, but they are they're fun builds, and I mean, there's not really there's not much to them for for being honest. Right. They're, they're real simple builds. Right. Nothing, uh, nothing real tricky about them. So. Yeah, nobody should be should be um, um, afraid of building, you know, one of your antennas because it, it oh, looks, yeah. you know, it's a very simple very design. Simple. It's been yep. proven time and time again. It's just, you know, the way that you implement it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. yep. All right, very good. Thank you, sir, for being on the stream. I appreciate it. I uh, I love the the designs and love the antennas and all the things that you're doing with. Uh, ham radio and your 3d printing stuff it's awesome i it's uh it's uh it's cool whenever i get to interview people that uh are making some waves in ham radio yeah i appreciate it it's been great thanks for having me yep um also some some side notes here uh on thursday i'm gonna do like a flex stream um for all you flex people we're gonna set up a wf key or w w w n k key I don't know what. Uh, oh, that's uh, it's so bad that I don't uh, know what uh, the. Uh, it's the remote CW for Flex, WK Flex. That's what it is, um, called, and uh, we're gonna set that up on Thursday. But um, yeah, um, other than that, thanks everyone. Appreciate it, and um, we will uh, we'll see you later. Seventy three.